it turns out that we started this expedition in uh, 2009 and at the time when we started the expedition uh, it was just the beginning of the high throughput sequencing method so me method which allow to sequence DNA this was also the time when uh, computers uh, were fast enough to do complex analysis and also data storage became possible one of the things that uh, surprised us in the results of Tara Oceans is that we, we were able to sample a very large fraction of the diversity of the organisms. We have virtually sampled most of the diversity in the oceans all over the world. To say it simply, it means that we, we have basically looped into a black box and we have found out what is in there. Now we have to figure out how this system in the black box works, so how the organisms interact with, with each other. We went in the blue, so to speak. Uh, we collected a lot of data, and now we will see what can, you know, just as we did not know what we would get when we started Tara Oceans, we don't really know what we are going to get by studying the, the, the samples and data of Tara Oceans. So this is the next next stage. Sure. Uh, so at the EBI, the overall uh, mission of the EBI is to take biological data sets to analyse and classify those data sets and then release them back to the scientific community such that they can use those results to interpret them. So this year we've received the Tara Oceans data set, which is the largest uh, mesh genomics data set we've received to date. So what does the EBI do? Well, first of all, we take that data and we deposit that in the uh, European Nucleotide Archive so it's there for all time and so that anyone can get to it in the future. And then my team takes that raw sequence data out and analyse it computationally to understand the organisms present in that sample and their potential function. And what that allows us to do is to take that data out and then start comparing it. So if we can then plot where all the samples were taken, show them on a map, then we can also start comparing their functional components between things that are geographically related. We're very proud to have the Tara data set and we believe that this is going to be that sort of gold standard uh, marine data set for the future. And we've already had users saying, can you com make my comparison the same as the Tara's or can you analyse my new marine data set such that we can compare it to the Tara Ocean data set? The sequence data is a huge amount of data. We're talking about 10 terabytes of data. To put that in context, I think that the, if you printed that all out, it would be several times higher than the Eiffel Tower. So what we do is we try and go through that sequence data. We've got a collection of, for, for want of a better term, known words, and then we use those known words and try and find them in the sequence data or the string of letters in that Tara data set. And it's that first time when there's been that full survey of the world's oceans, that zero time point. If we want to go forward in the future and see how the oceans change over time, this data set is that first sort of reference data set, that zero timestamp that we can then compare change against. It's going to become really important for understanding climate change. 